Captain Zix Norp of the Galactic Peacekeeping forced stared at the view screen with what passed for a jaw hanging open on his gelatinous face. His three eye stalks swiveled independently, each trying to focus on a different part of the unfolding chaos below. Is this, is this actually happening? He burbled, voice quivering like the rest of his amorphous body. Lieutenant Gloop, his second in command and fellow Blorbian, oozed closer to the screen. I, I think so, sir. Unless we're all hallucinating. Which, given what we're seeing, might actually be preferable. Down on the surface of Outpost X-17, a barren rock of a planet on the fringes of known space, a single human female wag war against an entire army of Raxnori raiders, and she was winning. Someone get me a status update. Zix Nort bellowed, his voice cracking in a most uncaptain-like manner, and maybe some antacids. Do we have anything for indigestion that works on thirteen stomachs? A chorus of tentacles and appendages flew over consoles as the bridge crew scrambled to make sense of the situation. Finally, Ensign Blurb, a young squishian fresh out of the academy, spoke up. Sir, according to our scans, the human's vital signs are, well, they're off the charts. Heart rate is through the roof, adrenaline levels are spiking, and she's releasing enough endorphins to get half the galactic senate high. Sigit. In other words, Lieutenant Gloop translated she's having the time of her life. Captain Zix Norp made a sound that could only be described as a gelatinous groan. Of course she is. Humans. Why did it have to be humans? Six hours earlier, Petty Officer First Class Alexis Latis Latinus had been minding her own business, enjoying some much-needed shore leave on outpost X-17. Sure, it wasn't exactly a luxury resort, but after six months cooped up on a patrol ship, even a grimy spaceport bar seemed like paradise. She was halfway through her third pan-galactic gargle blaster, a drink that, despite its name, contained no actual gargling and was about as pan-galactic as a mud puddle, when the first explosion rocked the station. Oh, for fuck's sake, Lexi muttered, setting down her drink with a thunk. Can't a girl get shit-faced in peace any more? The bartender, a Zorblaxian with more arms than Lexi could count, especially in her current state, chittered nervously. Vrax Nori Raiders, we're doomed. Doomed, I tell you. Lexi rolled her eyes so hard she nearly gave herself a headache. Yeah, yeah, doom and gloom. How about another drink instead of another prediction of our imminent demise? But as the sounds of weapon fire and screaming grew closer, Lexi realized that her drinking session was about to be cut tragically short. With a sigh that could have powered a small wind turbine, she pushed herself away from the bar. All right, time to earn my hazard pay. You got any weapons around here, tentacles? The bartender blinked all seven of his eyes in rapid succession. W weapons. What are you going to do? Lexi cracked her knuckles, a feral grin spreading across her face. What any self-respecting death worlder does best, cause an unconscionable amount of property damage and pick a fight with something way above my weight class. Back in the present, Captain Zix Norp and his crew watched in a mixture of horror and awe as Lexi tore through the Vrax Nori forces like a hot knife through butter, or, more accurately, like a Terran honey badger through a colony of space weasels. Sir, Enzyme Blurp reported, his voice a mixture of admiration and nausea, the human has just taken out an entire squad of Rax Nori heavies using nothing but a broken bottle and what appears to be a toaster. Lieutenant Gloop squinted at the screen. How did she even get a toaster? We're in the middle of a battle. Do I look like I know how the human mind works? Captain Zix Norp snapped. Just keep recording. The Galactic Peacekeeping Force is going to want a full report on this. Assuming they believe us, which I'm not entirely sure I do myself, on the view screen. Lexi had somehow acquired a Vrax Nori plasma rifle and was using it with a level of skill that suggested she'd been born with one in her hands, which, given what the captain knew about humans, wasn't entirely outside the realm of possibility. You want some of this? Lexi's voice crackled over the comm system, addressing a group of terrified Vrax Nori soldiers. Come on, you overgrown cockroaches. I've had hangovers that put up a better fight than you. As if to punctuate her point, she proceeded to use one Vrax Nori as an impromptu bowling ball, sending him careening into his comrades and scattering them like pins. 
strike, Lexi whooped, her laughter echoing across the battlefield. Oh man, if only the guys back at the bowling alley could see me now. Eat your heart out, Big Lebowski. Captain Zix Norp turned to his second in command. Lieutenant, please tell me you understood any of that. Gloop shrugged, a motion that looked disturbingly like a jellyfish having a seizure. I think it's some sort of human recreational activity involving projectiles and pins. Or possibly a religious ritual. With humans, it's often hard to tell the difference. Meanwhile, down on the surface, Lexi was having the time of her life. Sure, she was outnumbered about a thousand to one, but when had that ever stopped a human? If anything, it just made things more interesting. Come on, you ugly bastards, she shouted, ducking under a plasma blast and returning fire with pinpoint accuracy. I've seen scarier things crawling out of the deep fryer at McSpaceburger. A particularly brave, or possibly just very stupid, Frax Nori charged at her, mandibles clicking furiously. Lexi sidestepped at the last moment grabbing one of its armoured plates and using the alien's own momentum to send it flying into a nearby fuel depot. The resulting explosion was, in Lexi's professional opinion, absolutely spectacular. Oh, pretty lights, she giggled, watching the fireball rise into the air. Note to self, explosions in low gravity are way cooler than on Earth. As she admired her handiwork, a squadron of Rax Nori air support swooped in, raining energy bolts from above. Lexi dove for cover behind a conveniently placed piece of debris, which on closer inspection turned out to be the twisted remains of a public restroom. Oh sure, she muttered, when I need to pee there's never a bathroom around. But now that I need cover, here's one all gift wrapped and everything. The irony was not lost on her as she used the porcelain throne as a makeshift bunker, popping up to take pot shots at the airborne enemies. One by one, the Vrax Nori flyers began to drop from the sky, their pilots learning the hard way that dogfighting with a human was about as vital as trying to outdrink one. Yahtzee, Lexi crowed as the last fighter spiralled into the ground. Wait, no, that's not right. Bingo. Hole in one. Ah, screw it. I win, you lose. Suck it, alien scum. Back on the observation ship, Captain Zix Norp was seriously considering early retirement, or possibly a career change. Anything that would get him far, far away from humans and their particular brand of insanity, Sir Ensign Blurp reported, his voice a mixture of awe and terror. The human has just well, sir, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it. Try using your words, Ensign, Zix Norp sighed. Preferably in an order that makes sense. Well, sir, she appears to have constructed some sort of improvised tank. Using the remains of a public lavatory, three Vrax Nori exoskeletons, and what I believe is a vending machine, Lieutenant Gloop leaned in, his eye stalks nearly pressed against the viewscreen. By the great cosmic jellyfish, I think he's right. How is she even powering that monstrosity? As if in answer to his question, the makeshift vehicle roared to life, belching fire and smoke as it tore across the battlefield. Lexi's maniacal laughter could be heard even over the sound of crunching metal and screaming Vrax Nori. Beep, beep, motherfuckers, she hollered, ploughing through a squad of enemy troops like they were bowling pins. Last call for the pain train, all aboard. Captain Zix Norp felt a headache coming on. It was impressive, considering his species didn't actually have heads in the traditional sense. Someone please tell me we're recording all of this. Not that anyone will believe us, but I want proof when they cart me off to the psych ward. As the battle raged on, Lexi found herself facing an increasingly desperate and disorganized Vrax Nori force. It was almost sad, really. Almost. Come on, guys, she taunted, effortlessly dodging a barrage of plasma fire. I've seen better coordination in a three-legged race at a drunken family reunion. A particularly large Vrax Nori, probably some sort of commander, chittered furiously at her in its native language. Lexi's universal translator, miraculously still functioning despite the beating it had taken, helpfully provided a translation. You insufferable mammal. How dare you make a mockery of our glorious invasion. Lexi couldn't help but laugh. Glorious invasion. Please. I've seen more glorious invasions in a public restroom after Takuz Day. Speaking of which, with a wicked grin, she reached into her makeshift tank and pulled out what appeared to be a jury rig bomb made from, well, 
The less said about its components, the better. Hey, bug boy, she shouted, winding up like a baseball pitcher. Catch. The Varax Nori commander had just enough time for his compound eyes to widen in horror before the improvised explosive device sailed through the air and landed squarely in his outstretched claws. The resulting explosion was, to put it mildly messy, and that, Lexi declared to no one in particular, is why you should always wash your hands after using the bathroom. You never know where they've been or what they might be holding. In orbit, the crew of the observation ship watched in stunned silence as the last of the Vrax Nori forces either surrendered or fled, leaving behind a battlefield that looked like the aftermath of a particularly rowdy rock concert crossed with a demolition derby. Captain Zix Norp slowly oozed his way back into his command chair, his gelatinous form quivering with a mixture of relief and residual terror. Is, is it over? Lieutenant Gloop nodded, a motion that involved his entire body rippling like a pond in a rainstorm. I believe so, sir. The remaining Vrax Nori ships are jumped into FTL as we speak, in rather impressively quickly, I might add. I didn't know their engines could manage that kind of acceleration. And, I tell you what, Amazing what proper motivation can do, Ensign Blurp chimed in, his voice filled with what could only be described as hero worship. Do you think she'd sign an autograph for me? Captain Zix Norp fixed the young Ensign with all three of his eye stalks. Ensign that human down there just single-handedly defeated an entire invasion force using nothing but improvised weapons, sheer audacity, and what I can only assume is a blood alcohol level that would kill a Krogan. Do you really want to get close enough to ask for an autograph? Blurp deflated slightly. I suppose not, sir. But still, what a story to tell the Grandspawn some day. If we live that long, Gloop muttered. Sir, should we, I don't go down there, offer assistance? Or possibly just flee in terror? Captain Zix Norp considered his options carefully. On one hand, as representatives of the Galactic Peacekeeping Force, they had a duty to render aid and secure the area. On the other hand, there was a possibly intoxicated, definitely battle-crazed human down there who had just demonstrated an alarming proficiency for turning everyday objects into weapons of mass destruction. Right, he said finally, coming to a decision. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to send a message to Galactic Command, informing them of the situation. We're going to recommend that Outpost X-17 be classified as a human protectorate, effective immediately. And then we're going to get the hell out of here before the walking disaster zone decides she's bored and wants to commandeer our ship for a joyride. The crew stared at him in silence for a moment before bursting into a flurry of activity, each eager to put as much distance between themselves and the human as possible. As the ship prepared to jump to 5TL, Captain Zixnorp took one last look at the view screen. Down on the surface, Lexi was doing what appeared to be a victory dance atop the smouldering remains of a Vrax Nori battle cruiser, using a bent piece of metal as a makeshift microphone. We are never, Zix Norp declared solemnly, speaking of this again. Agreed. The unanimous chorus of agreement from his crew was music to his non-existent ears. A step. In th Lexi Martinez stood atop her improvised stage, surveying the aftermath of her one-woman war. The battlefield was a mess of twisted metal, scattered Vrax Nori weaponry, and the occasional twitching antenna of a particularly stubborn raider. The so way she'd, well, she said to no one in particular, that was fun, but I could really use a drink, as if on cue, a familiar chittering sound caught her attention. Turning, she saw the Zorblaxian bartender cautiously approaching, all seven of his eyes wide, with a mixture of fear and awe. You, you saved us, he stammered, his tentacles ringing nervously. The entire outpost. How can we ever repay you? Lexi grinned, hopping down from her perch with surprising grace for someone who had just gone twelve rounds with an alien invasion force. Well, for starters, you can pour me another one of those pan-galactic gargle blasters. I think I've more than earned it. The bartender blinked rapidly, all seven eyelids working independently. But the bar is destroyed, along with most of the outpost. Lexi's face fell for a moment before brightening again. No problem. I'm sure we can cobble something together. I mean, if I can make a tank out of a toilet and a vending machine, how hard can it be to make a cocktail? And so, as the dust settled on outpost X-17, 
and the surviving inhabitants began to emerge from their hiding places. They were treated to the surreal sight of and the multi-armed bartender scrounging through the wreckage, determined to construct the galaxy's most improvised bar. You know, Lexi mused as she hefted a piece of twisted metal that might have once been part of a Vrax Nori ship. We should probably call this into command at some point. Let them know the situation's under control. The bartender, who was delicately extracting unbroken bottles from the ruins of his establishment, paused. You mean you weren't sent here? This wasn't an official military operation. As then, Lexi laughed, a sound that sent nearby debris skittering away as if in fear. Official? Hell no. This was just me on shore leave. Although she paused, a mischievous glint in her eye. I wonder if I can expense this as team building or conflict resolution on my next performance review. As Lexi and the Zorblaxian bartender, who had introduced himself as Zix Lorp, no relation to the good captain, currently fleeing the system at maximum warp, pieced together their makeshift bar, a crowd of awestruck aliens began to gather. So Zix Lorp ventured, his tentacles deftly arranging a collection of mismatched containers that would serve as glasses. Do all humans celebrate victory like this? Lexi paused in her efforts to jury rig a refrigeration unit out of a damaged Vrax Nori power core and what appeared to be the innards of a malfunctioning translator. Celebrate. No, this is just the after-party. You should see how we celebrate when we really cut loose. Gagatherians exchanged nervous glances, clearly trying to imagine what could possibly constitute cutting loose for a species that considered single-handedly repelling an invasion to be a mild inconvenience to their drinking plans. As Lexi put the finishing touches on her improvised bar, a trio of official-looking aliens in crisp uniforms cautiously approached. Their species was unfamiliar to her, resembling nothing so much as ambulatory ferns with glowing fronds. Excuse me, the lead fern alien said, its fronds pulsing with each word. I am Administrator Frond, all of the outpost X-17 Governing Council. We, ah, couldn't help but notice your intervention in our recent unpleasantness with the Vrax Nori. Lexi grinned, leaning against the bar in a pose that would have been casual if not for the plasma rifle still slung across her back. Oh, that. Just a little pest control. You guys really ought to invest in better security, you know. Maybe some of those ultrasonic bug zappers. I hear they work wonders on Vrax Nori. Administrator Frond Lee's fronds rippled in what might have been amusement or possibly indigestion. It was hard to tell with ambulatory plant life. Yes, well, about that. We were hoping to discuss compensation. Lexi's eyebrows shot up. Compensation? Listen, Leafy, if you're looking for me to pay for damages, I'm going to have to disappoint you. My credit card's got a pretty low limit on accidental planetary renovation. No, no. Frondly's fronds waved frantically. We wish to compensate you for your services. The Outpost X-17 Governing Council is prepared to offer you a substantial reward for saving our, well, everything. Lexi blinked, then broke into a wide grin. Well, why didn't you say so? In that case, first round's on me. Zix Lorp. Fire up that nuclear-powered blender. We're making supernovae slammers for everyone. As the impromptu celebration kicked into high gear, with aliens of all shapes and sizes cautiously sampling Lexi's questionably safe cocktail creations, a familiar chittering sound cut through the noise, a battered Vrax Nori missing two of its six limbs and sporting an impressive collection of scorch marks dragged itself into view. The crowd parted, some reaching for weapons, others simply trying to put as much distance between themselves and the alien invader as possible. Lexi, however, simply raised an eyebrow and took another sip of her drink. Well, 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 she drawled. Look what the space cat dragged in. Come back for round two, or are you just here for the open bar? The Vrax Nori raised its remaining arms in what was probably meant to be a gesture of surrender but looked more like a very enthusiastic attempt at the YMCA dance. Please, it chittered, the universal translator struggling to keep up with its damaged vocal apparatus. No more. We surrender. Completely and utterly. Lexi pretended to consider this for a moment, tapping her chin thoughtfully with the barrel of her plasma rifle. I don't know, I was kind of looking forward to using that battle mech I'd been sketching plans for. I thought we... I'm thinking of calling it the X-Terminator. Get it? because you guys look like big bugs. 
The Vrax Nori's compound eyes widened in terror, its antennae drooping pathetically. But, but the battle is over. You've won. We're retreating. Retreating. Lexi scoffed. Is that what you called that mad scramble earlier? I've seen more dignified retreats at all-you-can-eat buffets when they run out of crab legs. The alien invader sagged, clearly at the end of its rope. What? What do you want from us? Lexi's grin turned predatory. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. See, I've got this little problem. My shore leave's been rudely interrupted. And I'm thinking I deserve a bit of an extension. So, here's the deal. You're going to call up your bosses, whoever's in charge of your little raiding operation. And you're going to tell them that Outpost X-17 is under my protection. The Vrax Nori nodded frantically, willing to agree to anything at this point. Oh, and one more thing, Lexi added, her tone deceptively casual. You're going to spread the word to every would-be invader, every two-bit pirate crew, and every overly ambitious used spaceship salesman in the galaxy. Let them know that if they even think about messing with this little corner of the universe, they'll have to deal with me. And trust me, buddy, I can get a lot more creative than toilet tanks and toaster bombs when I put my mind to it. As the thoroughly cowed Vrax, Nori scuttled off to deliver its message. Lexi turned back to the stunned crowd of aliens. Now then, she said, clapping her hands together, who's ready for Karawak? The collective groan that rose from the assembled aliens was quickly drowned out by the opening chords of Don't Stop Believe in blasting from a sound system that appeared to be cobbled together from parts of a Vrax Nori communication array and what might have once been a particularly unlucky food replicator. As Lexi launched into an enthusiastic, if not entirely tune of ill, rendition of the classic Earth song, the aliens of Outpost X-17 found themselves swapped up in the bizarre celebration. It was, they would later agree, the strangest and most terrifying party they had ever attended. But as they watched their human saviour belting out lyrics about streetlights and people, with the same intensity she had brought to the battlefield, they couldn't help but feel a grudging admiration. After all, any species that could transition so seamlessly from all-out war to impromptu karaoke was either completely insane or operating on a level of existence the rest of the galaxy had yet to comprehend. Possibly both. Uff. Light years away, in the secure briefing room of Galactic Peacekeeping Force headquarters, a group of high-ranking officials from various species sat in stunned silence. They had just finished watching the full, Unedited footage of the incident at Outpost Eek 17, as it was now being called. Admiral Zorblob, a Blorbian of such advanced age that he resembled nothing so much as a sentient puddle, was the first to speak. He well, he burbled, his voice carrying the weight of someone who has seen far too much in his long career. I suppose we should be grateful. Grateful? squeaked Commodore Pip, a squishy on whose normal vibrant pink hue had faded to a sickly pastel. That, that human nearly destroyed an entire outpost. T. Ah, but she didn't, did she? Admiral Zorp Blob countered. In fact, if you look at the casualty reports, you'll find that aside from the Vrax Nori forces, there were remarkably few injuries, mostly just a lot of property damage and some very traumatized bartenders. General K. Cheng, a chitinoid whose exoskeleton was adorned with so many medals it looked like a disco ball, clicked his mandibles thoughtfully. The Admiral has a point. We've been struggling with the Vrax Nori raiders for cycles. This human managed to not only repel them but apparently convince them to spread the word that the outpost is off limits. It's unprecedented, unprecedented. Commodore Pip's voice rose an octave. It's insane. We can't condone this kind of vigilante action. What if every human decided to take galactic law into their own hands? A collective shudder ran through the room at the thought. Admiral Zorp Blob oozed forward, his gelatinous form rippling with what passed for excitement in his species. That's just it, my dear Commodore. We don't need every human to do this. We just need the galaxy to think any human might. Imagine the deterrent effect. Thogwafix is the effect of Bollywood Homst. General K. Shanks Antenny twitched as he considered this. A psychological weapon. The mere threat of human intervention could be enough to maintain peace in some of our more troublesome sectors. Exactly. Admiral Zorp, Blob exclaimed, sending droplets of himself spattering across the table. We'll call it Project Death World Deterrent. Any time there's a crisis brewing, we simply let it be known that we're considering deploying a human. 
I bet you half the conflicts will resolve themselves before we even have to file the paperwork. Commodore Pip looked from the Admiral to the General, his eye stalks swivelling in disbelief. You can't be serious. This is madness. My dear Commodore, Admiral Zork Blob said, his voice taking on a paternal tone that was somewhat undermined by the fact that he was slowly absorbing spilled bits of himself back into his mass in my long career. I've learned one incontrovertible truth. Sometimes the only way to deal with madness is to embrace it, or, in this case, to weaponize it. And so, as the officials of the Galactic Peacekeeping Force debated the finer points of their new human deterrent strategy, Lexi Martinez remained blissfully unaware of her newfound status as the galaxy's most terrifying peacekeeping force. She was too busy teaching a group of increasingly inebriated aliens the finer points of the Macarena, using salvage racks nori limbs as makeshift maracas. In the grand tapestry of galactic history, it would be remembered as the day when the concept of peace through superior firepower was officially replaced by peace through superior weirdness. And somewhere in the vast expanse of space, the spirits of long-dead human diplomats looked down upon the scene and thought, yeah, that tracks. As 